Hello everyone, welcome to Game Brigade. We are going to be diving into Moonraker's Binding Ties expansion. This is the first in the series where we'll be covering each of the three new modular expansions coming to Kickstarter for Moonrakers. Moonrakers was a game that I gave one of my top accolades in 2020 uh, in terms of overall gameplay. I loved Moonrakers. And uh, we are now seeing three expansions coming to Kickstarter, and I've been given the opportunity to review them, test them, and uh, give you my thoughts and opinions on them. So if you are looking for more information in terms of detailed uh, analysis of this expansion, stay tuned for that. Okay, so Binding Ties, what is it? This expansion is pretty much tied towards bringing the negotiation aspect of Moonrakers and elevating it to another level. Negotiation is root and core to the game of Moonrakers. It is essential to succeed in any aspect of the game. Binding Ties takes that negotiation and allows players to gain different types of rewards for working together on contracts and then spending those rewards to gain certain types of abilities for building their decks better or getting additional resources or even getting victory points. The players have to be careful in that because if you give too many faction rewards to your opponents, they can use it to run away with the game. So there still is a uh, push your luck or... Um, element to the game where you don't want to give too much assistance to your allies or to your they're not i guess they're not allies your opponents that you work well with so we're going to go through each of the rewards real quick and talk about what they do in binding ties every time you go on a contract with another player and you are successful you will earn a faction reward in their player color you can spend those rewards to get a, a bonus based on the level you're at and how much of the reward you spend. The chart currently has uh, these six different sections uh, with five of them being the reward levels. At level one, you can discard a contract. So if there's something in the uh, armory and you don't like that contract, you can just discard it and get rid of it. Uh, or you could discard an armory card. You'll notice that there are two different colors here. You have one that's a white and one that is uh, pretty much all the faction colors. With its all faction colors, you can use any amount of a faction color, uh, faction points to spend it. But if it's white, you have to use singular faction colors. So those are usually more valuable. The top section is more valuable. At level two, we can gain a credit or uh, get an action card, gain an action or draw a card which is very powerful. Level three, we can draw an objective card. So we have new objective cards added to the game as well. Or trash a card from your hand. Trashing a card is a powerful ability in any kind of deck building game. It's allowing you to discard a card from your hand and completely deleting it. So you're, you're no, you no longer have that as your deck build. So if you wanna get rid of a bad card, something that's a dead card in your hand, that's what trashing means. Uh, here at level four, we have subtract two from any one requirement. That's referring to the contracts. Uh, if you don't have enough crew to complete on a contract, you can spend faction to reduce that requirement by two. Then we have plus one bonus card. So that means if you are, um, you know, buying something from the, uh, the armory or the crew, you can get a random card from that. And then prestige plus one prestige it's basically just getting a victory point or blocking one hazard that's protecting a victory point so these are all the different types of rewards that players can spend their resources on to get bonuses uh, as they are progressing in their build and trying to complete contracts eventually on their own binding ties adds more cards to our pool we have new objective cards these objective cards are primarily, I would say, between 80 and 90% focused on uh, faction rep as the key uh, terms in them. But there are a few that are not specifically based on faction rep. It might be, uh, you know, fail a mission with the person who's in first place uh, or um, have 
20 cards in your deck hand and discard pile so there are still some more that are encouraging you to try different strategies in terms of building your deck which is welcomed we have new contracts and almost all of these are going to be focused on the faction terminal reward system with a new reward type being added in for faction rewards and you'll notice that they're colored so that means whoever success when the the mission leader successfully completes this uh, if they earned that reward they would earn in that faction color now if you are that faction color or that faction color is not in the game you can then choose to gain a reward in a different color of your choice this is also part of the negotiation process just like everything else in the reward sections of the um, the game these are all available to be negotiated for so you can pass those that, that, that faction rep to another player if you want to. We also have a bunch of new crew cards added to the game. These are a lot of cards dealing with faction rep as well. Uh, but what's interesting is they allow you to burn faction rep to trash cards or uh, draw additional cards, giving you more abilities to use that faction rep. And the final thing we have added to the deck are a bunch of more ship parts. Again, a lot of them dealing with faction reps. You'll see that there's a big focus on this mechanic in this expansion. So I'm going to go through what my thoughts are about this expansion, give you my pros and cons, and give you guys the best uh, you know, examples in terms of what I like and don't like about it. So stay tuned for that. Right off the bat, Binding Ties definitely changes the dynamic to Moonrakers. So if you are a person who didn't care for base Moonrakers because the negotiation might have been too difficult or some of the mission objectives were too hard, Binding Ties' key focus is to rebalance the negotiation process, give players some more incentives to working together, and give you some sort of ramping up abilities. I I have a hard time sometimes using analogies for other games, but a good example of what I feel like Binding Ties does is the same thing that Prelude does to Terraforming Mars. Prelude expansion was basically a way to accelerate the game, move the game a little bit faster from the early game where things might be a little slow. I felt that also happened here with Binding Ties. Because players are earning faction rewards by working together, and most of the time early in the game, people are more opt to work together, uh, it allows you to get more credits, draw more cards, add cards to your deck, and effectively does ramp your uh, speed up. If you were to say that if you were to get a, a card at one turn, you know, one per turn, I would say this gives you more of like a 1.25 cards per turn. So it does give you that accelerated bonus. So that can be bonus. That could be a great thing or a negative thing based on how you you know, you like your play length. If you like games a little shorter, that is an option there. I liked that there was more additional objectives that we had to focus on to go forward to uh, allowing us to have some more deck building options because I felt like some of the base game objectives were very linear. They were basically have X amount of um, ship parts of all the ship parts or, or destroy a ship part with a fourth ship part. It was just a bunch of stuff that that kind of shoehorned you in specific ways and maybe that was something that would be very random because maybe those ship parts didn't come up so i like that they are focusing on adding additional objectives giving you some more ways to uh, focus on some additional builds which was great the crew what I liked about the crew was that it gave me opportunities to have some more beneficial crew and I didn't have to worry about always worrying about the faction or portion of them. Usually it was just an added on bonus if you wanted to take advantage of it. So overall that was a clean, easy uh, addition to the game as well. So what are my final thoughts about Moonrakers? Well, or about Binding Ties rather. Overall, I give Binding Ties a very high praise in terms of adding it into the base game. The modularity of being able to include this into my base game was simple. Just put everything in, shuffle, and you're fairly much ready to go. There were aspects that were a little bit less for me in terms of what I appreciated of the negotiation. And that's because, as I said, the negotiation is completely turned on its head because things are a lot different now. Instead of, we had players, for example, uh, want to go on missions for zero reward just so that they can earn faction rewards. It changes the dynamic completely. And now this is also, and I said this in my original review for Moonrakers, the negotiation process and is 
per player group. So sometimes it's going to be hard for me to express what my player group does because your player group complete completely different in terms of the negotiation. But with my player group, base game Moonrakers, I felt like our negotiation was very easy. We Everyone was working together, uh, trading coins and victory points fairly well. Uh, when we added in Binding Ties, it seemed like people were less interested in the coins and victory points and more interested in just making sure they're going on every mission as they can because the faction rep was so powerful and allowed you to ramp up fairly quickly. So I like and dislike the dynamic of the change to the Binding Ties faction uh, negotiation process. And I do think maybe over time with additional plays with this, maybe my group might find a better balance in terms of where the negotiation process lies, as well as how often do you take people on missions for free. There was a lot of times people were like, sure, if you're coming for free, I'll take you along. Uh, and then those people were gaining, gaining, gaining faction rep to the point where now they have uh, prestige tacked up where they can just get free victory points right off the bat and uh, you know jump up three points when they choose to. So there is that balancing level of where how you know how much negotiation do you do so i'm cur curious with additional plays where that falls off uh, other than that everything was very clean with moonrakers binding ties i'm excited to see what all the expansions do when they're combined together uh i feel like it's going to be a wild ride but everything so far has been very clean and uh satisfied satisfying with overall experience so that is my um quick review for binding ties hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if uh, you did make sure you leave a comment down below ask any questions you want regarding the expansion i've played this several times i have a very good uh working knowledge of it so if you have any additional questions make sure you leave them down below i'll answer them as i go and then if you like the video make sure you like subscribe and all those youtube things that you guys know how to do this is Brian from Game Brigade. I appreciate you for staying and watching. I will talk to you all very soon.